Good morning. Okay, so we're carrying on from 777 part one yesterday. What happened was the sun was so hot that all the equipment I brought up here basically overheated, including this camera I'm using now. It overheated, so cut cut the recording short. So I ended up dancing over an hour, 20 minutes, and I only managed to get 30 something minutes worth. But it's a beautiful spaders morning this morning. The sun is out, but this is the right sun. This is the photosynthesis sun. I don't need to wear a hat in the sun because I'm actually exposing my body to the growth hormone. Um, yeah. So let's go. Just a light morning breeze exercise before I start the day. Um, it's meant to be an intense one, but this one is just to show you that anyone can do spaders. Anybody. Yeah? It's just the right time, the right food, the right air, the right water, and tense, hoof, and have fun. Let's go. Get this. Understand that I'm using an ancient language called a can's language but understand this i'm approaching 30 minutes so i'm just going to break it down so you can you can know what to expect in the next lesson understand this um the egyptians they taught socrates yeah they taught socrates and and all these greats something they then brought that thing back to greece and it turned out that they had taught them civilization, how to be civilized. And what was it they gave them that made them civilized people now? They gave them a system of writing, a system of writing. No, they didn't teach them a language. No, they gave them a system which allows you to put your <coughs> into language form, into understandable form. And thus you can now write it. Once you can now start keeping documentations and, you know, of your cures and this and that and that, you have become a civilized person. The Egyptians, they gave them that. That thing which they gave them happened to be the phonetic system. That's why it greets their phonetics. Ancient Egyptians, the original Phoenicians in terms of Western civilization. And then get this. Freemasons are Phoenicians. The Catholic Church, they use phonet phonetics. Why? Because it's in the Bible. So get this. Using that system, I'm going to show you that the system does exist by using a right in front of me to explain things that are currently right in front of you but without proper explanation. We're going to dig the origins of where things come from. Because it's, it's one thing for you to say in books that 777 represents the number of God, but it's another thing for it to be represented within your culture, within your belief system. It's another thing. It, it, it could mean that the origination of that was written was taken from that which is lived that which is written says that earth was created on the fifth day that which is lived says yes earth was created on the fifth day and earth is a female that which is written says that man was put onto this planet onto this earth on the sixth day that which is lived says on the sixth day creativity and adventurousness was born 
That which is written says on the seventh day, God rested. That which is led says on the seventh day. Ancient wisdom is tied. Why? Because if God created, listen, if God created everything on the final day, what is he going to do? He finished the manual. He finished the book that has all wisdom that is contained within everything he has created or she has created and sealed it. You could call it the ancient scrolls or the ancient world. But my people say that which is lived says the ancient wise one. Seven, seven, seven. Listen. The learning environment, the teaching environment, it's actually outside because we're not really meant to be learning about anything else. This is the honest truth. We're meant to be learning about life. And this is the honest truth. Um, I don't know the truth in the story, but I, I saw something on the internet and there was a man, a Chinese man, he was having a heart attack and he collapsed as he was going on the floor and he, and he was sat there suffering, chest, you know, just going. The little strength he had, he was reaching out for people and the people were walking around him. He realized if he keeps reaching, he won't succeed. They will just think he's crazy while he's dying. So, he happens to be rich and he happened to be loaded at that moment. So he reached into his pockets, drew out a large wall of money and started chucking it. Immediately, people flocked to him. Immediately, they realized his situation. What is it? What is it about money that makes you connect money to life? Because you see that day, money saved his life. <laughs> I just realized that. Nah, 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 listen. I'm about to make a great point, but on a flip note, I just realized money to save his life, but that is the saddest thing. I was about to tell you the, the punchline of this whole thing is, why do we no longer recognize each other's pain? We're, we're disconnected from each other. There are seven But we think there are 3.9 trillion of us. That's what we think. And because we think there are 3.9 trillion of us, we feel so distant. So distant that we've started to see um, there's black within us, there's white within us, there's green within us, there's red within us. Of course, because we don't see each other often enough. We don't talk to each other often enough. We don't hold, we don't communicate often enough, even with ourselves. When was the last time we met up? Kujo, when was the last time we met up? Bro, I'm talking to you. Kujo, when was the last time we linked up? When was the last time you bailed me and said, wah, go on, wah, go on, wah, go on. I was feeling a certain way and I knew that a certain cell, a certain cell of me ain't right. So I thought I'd check on you. Bro, you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. When was the last time you did that, Kojo? Ajoa? When was the last time you did that? The other day, imagine I was walking through town, Ajoa, yeah, imagine, yeah. And I, and I was chatting shit. You didn't even stand up for me. But I know you were there. I didn't do nothing to us, you were chatting shit to me. You didn't stand up for me. But I do, I know you were there. And Kojo just stood there. 
Imagine, just imagine, if we had a way of identifying ourselves. Imagine you're riding a car and there's a badge. And the badge is deep blue and it's got a certain symbol on it to represent Kwame. And then there's another badge. It's light blue to represent Ama Saturday ones, ancient wise ones. So imagine you're driving and you you you've got the light blue one, my man's got the dark blue one, and you can see you can see my man in, in red here, yeah, Monday Kojo. He's not he's not giving my man listen. You just wink at my man and say, Don't worry. When I get there, you're coming in. You see what I mean? We don't communicate. We don't communicate. We talk about irrelevant stuff. We don't talk about things that, that could possibly bring peace. You know, you know why there's so much indifference between us? It's simple because we don't know each other. I'm lucky. I've grown up. In, in a very good mix. Growing up in England, you know, it's a very good mix, but me especially, because um, I've grown up in black neighborhoods, white neighborhoods, racist white neighborhoods, Indian neighborhoods, Pakistani neighborhoods. I've grown up in the ghetto, in it. Yeah? But I'm not a ghetto, but I'm not claiming that. But I've grown up and I've seen a lot of shit, and I've, I've what would you call it, chilled with a lot of people, and I've mixed with a lot. Growing up in England, I'm telling you, it's not the easiest. Listen. Listen. You don't conquer a third of the world. Physically. Enslave a third of the world. Physically. And then proceed to conquer a third, no sorry, half of the world mentally with your language and 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 take over so much of the world with your presence you don't do all that and be an easy person to fool or you don't do all that and be an easy nation for a foreigner because you do all that for sovereignty. Englanders, listen, I'm going to teach you so much that I learned being an English boy. I'm going to teach you the true value. Listen, I'm going to teach you the true value of, listen, they say the Queen's English. Think, where is the king's English? I'm going to teach you the king's English. It's the Freemason language. It's a system. A way of speaking. A way of communication. A way of understanding. I won't ravel to you what the system does. It makes you a true English fellow. That word fellow. It's not used lightly. I'm telling you. It doesn't mean friends. Deeper than that. We're going to speak the kin's tongue. Remember this. The English language is based on an alphabetic system given to the English by the Greeks, whose language is based on a system given to them by the Egyptians. Well, the Akans, they happen to be Phoenicians too. The Egyptians, they have 22 phonetic alphabetic characters. They gave that to the Greeks. The Akans, they have 22 phonetic alphabetic characters just like the Egyptians the Egyptians you see the word soul we just spoke about 
the soul. The Egyptians call the soul Ra. Ra. So the god of the Egyptians, Amun Ra. Amun Ra. The word Ra means soul. What well, they can they say? Okura. Okura. Oku means you're fighting. Oku. Oku. You're fighting. Just like the Egyptians. Ra. Your fighting soul, your warring soul. We're going to go back to before the Egyptians. We're going to rewrite English physically, mentally, spiritually. I wish you all good luck. Number 777, perfection, completion, infinity, beginning and the end. Part two will be adding up chaos. So you can see that the word chaos is spelt and it actually adds up to chaos. But you see the word chaos as in C H A yeah? O S. Cha Oz. If I say charcoal, C H A. Yeah? If I say C A Y, you say K. Yeah? If I say K A Y, you say K. But if I say C-H-A, how does that become chaos? I'll show you how it becomes chaos. Because, you see, now look, look, listen. Because if you believe C-H-A, listen carefully, which goes to spell chaos, yeah, is chaos, then this is what you would actually be, a chump. Now, look at C-H-A-M-P. And you're going to realize it is on the same axis and has the same value as the word chaos. So when you figure out what chaos really is, you actually become the champion because the word, the word they're using right now is figuratively... Um, Testify to you being the champion of chaos by understanding this, this hidden secret. You actually become the champion of chaos. Why? Because if chaos is going to be caused, it will be caused by no one else. But by... Kwesi, Akosuya, Kojo, Ajua, Adowa, Kwabena, Abena, Kweku Ekuya Yao Ya Kofi Efia Kwame Ama Understand this Even the goat is born on a day. So if the chaos, if the chaos is being caused by a goat it's a Monday, guys, yeah, and he's a goat. It's the Monday. Yeah. Guys, um, spade sizing. Um, yeah, I was just spade sizing, you know what I mean? Just um, breathing in the air, chatting to you guys, squeezing and squeezing, tensing and tensing the muscles and just working the muscles from tippy toes to, you know, back of the neck to the neck to the brain by oxygenizing the mind to the brain by oxygenizing the heart every single cell of the body because remember the blood the blood the true color of blood is red and blue not red but red and blue why oxygenated blood is living blood deoxygenated blood is dead blood and whilst you're oxygenating your blood 
Guys, you can ask your doctor this. Does oxygen help my brain to, to become cleverer? Your doctor will tell you, well, oxygen helps your brain to certainly live and, and do everything it does and more. Why? Because oxygen is the food of the brain. That's why when you start of oxygen to the brain, you become brain dead. It's the first thing that dies. That's why someone's brain dead, but the heart's beating. The heart can hold on a bit. The body can hold on, but the brain, the brain cannot be starved of oxygen. It needs it. Spade a size. We don't just feed the brain. We feed the mind, body, soul. We feed the being. With the four elements. Assuming you, you've had your good food in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you've hydrated. So that's earth, water, and now you're taking an air. And I told you about the sun earlier. You took in the sun as well for photosynthesis growth. And now you're working that energy whilst you're learning. You're working that energy whilst you're mentally gaining strength, spiritually gaining strength, everything gaining strength. Listen. It's a new day. I love you. Good afternoon. So, part two of 777. Recapping from where we left off yesterday. I'm going to quickly recap so you understand. But before I do, remember what we're doing. We're spadicizing. So, rule number one. Hoof. Two. Tense. Three. Breathe. Four. Have fun. Those are the rules we're operating under. So once you're set, and then we will get going. So let's start recapping. Yesterday we introduced you to the first seven, seven days. The second seven, the set of females. The third seven, the set of men. And today, and then we came up with K, K-A-Y. The value of humanity is K-A-Y. And the numerical value is 529, 529. K is 5, A is 2, Y is 9. So we're looking for the word chaos. So how do we get the word chaos? And how does it make sense? That's where we are. So recapping, we're going back to the Ifud, the 3 by 4 key, which the Egyptians taught the Greeks, which the Greeks taught the Freemasons, which the Freemasons used to build the empire or the monarchy of England and thus the language of English as we know. I would like to point out to you, first of all, the Greeks, they gave the English an alphabet system. But listen to the word carefully, alphabet. It denotes alphas and bets, alphas and bets. Alphas being A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. Bets being one to nine. But in the English alphabet, so-called, you don't see any bets in there. Meaning, it's an alpha system with the bets missing. It's not an alphabet system. It's an alpha system with the bets missing. When we come to the three by four system, we apply the bets. And the bets give us a different understanding. The correct understanding. Because it leads us to the right path. So let's get the grid. The grid is three by four. Three by four. So in grid number one, you have the number one. In grid number two, you have A, B, C to the value of two, two, two. Grid number three, D, E, F, three, three, three. Four, G, H, I, four, four, four. Five, J, K, L, five, five, five. 6 M N O 6 6 6 Keep that in mind M N O 6 6 6 7 P Q R S 7 7 7 7 8 
TUV 888 9 WXYZ 999 9 11 Put a smiley face in the box 12 Put zero because zero is outside the realm we spoke about that yesterday of numbers zero is not actually a number that you you have that's why in algebra you always end up cancelling zero out yeah okay good and then finally we spoke on um sorry and then the 12 key the 12 key is the hashtag sign just put the hashtag sign as you normally do so now you have all the English alphas in front of you and now you have the bet that correlates to each one of them correlating meaning now you have true English alphabets so using this system now we're going to finish off the word chaos now you know how we've got the word K K A Y we use the initials of all the males born and all the females born, we had six Ks to the value of six, sorry, to the value of five, six A's to the value of two, two nines to the value of nine, sorry, two Y's to the value of nine. Do you see what I mean? You can correlate them on your grid. So we have the word K. That's how we got to the word K. Now we need to add OS. So, um, the next step now is for us to do the algebra, uh, the algebra equation. So, we all know KAY, um, the value of K is 5, the value of A is 2, the value of Y is 9. Now, we need to interpret that into maths. So, we need to interpret KAY into numerics. So, there are... 6 K's, it means it's 6 times 5. 6 times 5. Because K is to the power of 5 times 6. So 6 times 5 equals 30. A. A's value is 2. So A equals A times, oh, I'm sorry, 2 times 6. 2 times 6. 12. Y's value is 9, and there are 2, so 2 times 9, 18. When you add these three figures, 30, 12, and 18, you will get the sum of 60, 6, 0. As I told you earlier, algebra, and as the key shows you, 0 is not yours to count, so cancel that, and you're left with 6. Understand that? Zero is not yours to count, so cancel that, and you're left with six. Now, let's look on the grid and find out where number six belongs. Number six is on key M and O. We're looking for the letter O. So it means the addition, get this, the addition of all the males, all the females born in those seven days comes up to 60 take away the zero comes up to six you find that on the grid at m and o we're looking for the word for the letter o so o so now we've got the word k yo k yo how do we get chaos with an s well like i said there are all this time we're dealing with the number seven there are seven days there are seven boys there are seven girls so let's go to key number seven and you realize that key number seven holds p q r s we're looking for the letter s so take s now we've got the word chaos chaos why does this make sense because get this, if chaos is going to be caused, it's going to be caused by someone born on a day that's within those seven days. So why did they spell chaos 
as C H A O S rather than K A Y O S. I'll tell you why. Now, we're going to examine the word chaos as we know it in the dictionary. C H A O S. Cha Oz. Cha Oz. Cha Oz. Now, the numerical code on your a food grid is 24267 for cha Oz. 24267. Now you're going to realize that that code opens to the word CHAMP C-H-A-M-P C-H-A-M-P In other words, he who is able to discover the true identity of chaos becomes the champion of chaos He who is able to identify chaos can own chaos and can become the champion and becomes automatically the champion of chaos so now you know what chaos is now you know what true chaos is and now you understand the trickery between the word chaos and the word champ and how we're revealing we're going to take it one step further because we're going to now, yeah, use the system. Because if you're the champion of chaos, then you have to show us chaos. So we're going to use this system to now show you chaos. Scientifically, mathematically, in every way possible. Already I'm sweating. Listen, why? Because I'm shredding. Um, the sun's out. So I'm actually out here to shred. So the little, the little tension and the little breathing I'm doing in between speaking to you, it is absolutely tearing me down. You get me? Motion efficiency. Motion efficiency. Okay. So, now that you understand that every, every word now has numerical values attached to make it true alphabets. Let's find out the number of man. The number of man. Yeah? Because man has a number. Every man has a number. Let's find out the number of man. How do we find out the number of man? It is simple. You take the day you're born on. You find out the numbers for that day. And that's the number of everyone born on that day. So, let's start on Sunday. Now, take into mind the word day, D-A-Y. It appears seven times with the same meaning each time. So, ignore that. Because it, it is a point of reference that we are speaking about the day. Ignore that. The real name of the day is the word without the word day. So, for example, let's go from here. Sunday. Sun, without a day. Sun, S-U-N. Your code is 786. 786. Monday, without the day. Mon. Your code is 666. Monday without the mon, sorry, without the day. Your code is 666. Tuesday, your code is 8837. Tuesday, 8837. Wednesday, without the day. Wednesday, your code is 933637. 9336. Three, seven. Thursday without the day. Thurs. Eight, seven, eight. Sorry, my bad. Thurs. Eight, four, eight, seven, seven. Eight, four, eight, seven, seven. Eight, four, eight, seven, seven. Friday. F 
fry without the word day. Fry. Three, seven, four. Three, seven, four. Saturn's day. Sata. Day. Sata. Day. Without the day. Sata. Seven, two, eight, eight, seven. Seven, two, eight, eight, seven. So, now we have identified the mark of men or the mark of men. Every man has a different number. But I told you to take notice in particular of key number 666, which is MNO. MNO. M's value 6N606. Now, we're trying to identify someone. We're going to go to a quotation in the Bible. Uh, we're going to use the system of the Bible to solve a riddle that's in the Bible. Because you can't give me a riddle and not give me the tools to use to solve the riddle. So, we're going to go to... Um, bear with me two secs. Let me get out of the light because I can't see my screen. Okay. So... We're going to go to Revelations 13, 18. King James Version, KJV. Revelations 13, 18. King James Version. Listen carefully, dear friends, family. And yeah, listen, please. Revelations 13, 18. 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Let me read that again. Revelations thirteen eighteen. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. In translation, if you don't have understanding, you cannot count the number of the beast. And you have to count. The word count is important because you have to count it in order to reach it. For it is the number of a man. And when you reach the number of a... When you count the number and you get it right, you're going to discover that it is the number of a man. It means that you, you, for you to discover that, you have to know every man's number. For you to discover one man's number, you have to know every man's number. You cannot make an assumption that everyone here is men you cannot make an assumption that you can collect a focus group and discover that one within that focus group you have to know everyone's number and i've told you about everyone's number so now where are we so let's read on for it is the number of a man and his it specifies his because you see, when you say man, you don't necessarily mean man. You actually mean humanity. So when you now change what you mean, you have to specify. So initially, it is the number of a man. Everyone. Everyone. And his now, they specify his they could have just said and the number is but they didn't they said and his 